the site of Hill 62 is a small museum that contains machinery and artefacts. We discovered that many of Ladywood's factories were heavily involved in the war efforts. The landowner has collected objects from the time of the war and put them on show in a museum. Some were dug up on site and others have been donated. The shape and size of the artefacts varies. From this gun to this gun. A bit, a bit on the heavy side. We discovered some of these things are made in Birmingham. Birmingham was always an industrial city and it changed to produce millions of things for the war effort. Ball Pits and Sons Limited. They made things like this at Spring Hill. This is what it was like during the First World War and this is what it's like today. At least the library is still there. During the war they turned to munitions, which you can see in this victory souvenir. These are the minutes from the Bull Pits uh, factory in 1915. One of the things it says is that uh, the turnover at the factory had, had increased because of, of the war effort. And in 1915 their income was £133,000 compared with just £56,000 in 1912. This is the former premises of Bellis and Morecambe. It has barely changed since this view was taken in 1915. Bellis and Morecambe employed many women workers who up until then were usually housewives and were not used to working in the factories. The women took the place of the men who left the factory to join the forces. The factory was well known for its steam compressors and engines. During the war, it started making ammunitions. The company received this telegram from the Ministry of Munitions. The telegram was sent just before Easter in 1918, and it's calling on all the industrial companies to make a special effort to replace the serious losses in guns, machines, ammunition and the likes, resulting from losses in the great battle now in progress, it says. And it goes on to ask people to give up the Easter holidays and to work through to help the fighting army and it says the fighting army can be shown what the industrial army can achieve and it was signed by the Ministry of Munitions Winston S. Churchill The Ladywood History Group found loads of employment cards which tell us about some of the wartime workers Within yards of our newsroom is Clark Street and some of the workers used to live there. David was 39. He served four years in the army and was wounded above the left eye. George lived at 5 back of 87. He used to be a tram driver before joining Bellis and Morecambe. After four and a half years in the army, he was shot in the left side of his stomach. He received no pension. Thomas was 33 and lived at number 9. He was slightly gassed. In 1920, he died of pneumonia. Leach Street used to be here. George, who lived at number 16, served seven years in the army in France and Belgium. He was wounded twice in the left leg and had a pension of 16 shillings a week. Our office was built on Beach Street. This is where 42-year-old John used to live, who was released from the army due to shell shock. Other people who received injuries included Horace of Ignore Port Road. He received bullet wounds in the left shoulder. James of Essington Street was slightly wounded and gassed. William of Nova Scotia Street was blown up by a shell which upset his nerves. Sydney of Hagley Road was wounded in the left hand and both legs. Sydney of Sparkbrook was wounded in the right thigh left ankle and left wrist. Albert from St Paul's got injured in the right shoulder and got frostbitten feet. One man from Prescott Street near Hockley had a shell wound and his right leg was amputated. William of Hansworth had his left leg amputated below the knee and sadly a man from Anderton Street near Springhill was killed in action. <laughs> 